CES is over and done with this year, and there was a lot of interesting and cool stuff that was announced, including stuff in the budget PC hardware category, as well as high-end fancy stuff that we all like to ooh and ah at. I'll drop some links down below to videos from fellow tech fan members that attended CES and covered a lot of this stuff, ranging from the high end and the fancy to the budget and more cost value stuff. But today, I want to talk about the 5600 XT and a little bit on the Intel XE graphics card. My name is Chris, this is Coalition Gaming, and today I'll be your computer technician. Real quick, if you're new around here and you like PC, hardware, tech, gaming, news, reviews, tutorials, and all that sort of stuff, make sure you click that subscribe button, hit that like button. We always got more coming and we always got a lot of interesting content coming at you. So let's get to it. Amongst laptops and a Threadripper 64 core, AMD had a pretty big announcement and that was the Radeon 5600 XT. This is gonna be their sub $300 graphics card to compete as a 1080p good card for, for the money, but as well as an entry level 1440p card. A lot of people were excited for this category because there's a lot of competition happening in this category right now, but there's more to it than that. They announced the MSRP to be a $279, so about $280 is what they're telling us it's gonna cost. The big problem I have with that is the fact that you can get 5700s, which outperform RTX 2060s, by the way, you can get 5700s for the $300 to, well, basically between three and four, uh, three and $350, which really hurts the value at $280 for the 5600 XT. Never mind the fact that EVGA also came out and announced the RTX 2060 KO edition, which is gonna be going for 279, as well as 299 if you want, like a factory overclocked version of it. And this card will perform as good as the reference RTX 2060, which technically is supposed to beat the performance of the 5600 XT. Now, given the price point where the 5600 XT is supposed to be 279, uh, or rather the 200 to $300 range, um, the 5600 XT has been reported to outperform the 1660 Ti by a little bit. So basically it will sit between the 1660 Ti and the RTX 2060, or rather the 5700 in terms of performance. Um, there's a big problem with that because the 1660 Super exists and the 1660 Super performs within the ballpark, very much on par to the 1660 Ti while costing $50 less. The 1660 Super can be had for 230 to 240, around $250. So we're looking at a 230 to $250 card that can perform within the ballpark of the $280 5600 XT, the value of the 5600 XT is getting killed right off the bat. AMD can only really answer this one way, and that's to drop the price of the 5600 XT, in my opinion, to about $250. At that point, it will beat the performance of the 1660 Super and the 1660 Ti, and be far enough away from the 2060 KO edition to be within uh, consideration. But maybe AMD is pulling another trick again. Uh, if you guys remember what happened with the 5700 and 5700 XT, AMD, uh, NVIDIA responded with the RTX 2060 Super and 2070 Super. And then AMD said, ha, gotcha, and dropped the prices of the 5700 and 5700 XT to make them competitive, to not lose the advantage that they were supposed to have in terms of performance. Well, rather to maintain the value, essentially. So who knows if AMD is going to do that again. Maybe they're out here saying, okay, we're gonna do the 5600 XT for $280. <laughs> Just kidding, <laughs> when it releases, it's going down to 250. Would be nice, right? Here's to hoping. So that's what I have to say about the 5600 XT. On to the Intel XE graphics card. And really, I only have one big question for this that not a lot of people are asking. I've heard Jay's Two Cents talk about it in person, but I haven't really heard him talk about it too much um, outside of like YouTube or like, you know, streaming or anything like that. Yeah, so Intel XE graphics card, one major thing. We already can see from the, the current version of it, all the, uh, the footage that you guys seen from CES, if you looked at Gamers Nexus video, it's not that great. It's performing on par to like an RX 560, something like that, which is fine. If they come out with a low power PCIe powered 
a compact version of that graphics card in the future? I think it would be fine, but for one main reason, and this is the question that not a lot of people are asking, will it bring back quick sync support to programs like Adobe Premiere that can use that? Now, the reason I ask is if you're building a Ryzen system or a Xeon system, many, actually most Xeons don't have integrated graphics, basically any system without an Intel iGPU, you're giving up quick sync acceleration in programs like Premiere or anything else that can take advantage of it. OBS can as well. So there is a small compromise you're making to go with a system that has more cores or more value or otherwise something else that, you're, that you need. You're giving up the Intel iGPU, you're giving up QuickSync. So when I heard that Intel was coming out with the graphics card a long time ago, I'm like, hey, wait a second, maybe we can get QuickSync back. And then that way you can have a no compromises system as a streamer, content creator, game recorder, anything like that. You can have the best of both worlds with a Ryzen CPU and QuickSync supported graphics card all in the same system. Hopefully we get an answer to this question pretty soon because that would be pretty awesome. Okay, we're done here. If you guys like this video, click that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. We always got more coming. Make sure you watch our streams. Tune in every Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific, twitch.tv slash coalition gaming crew and follow us on our Instagram, Twitter, Discord, all that sort of stuff. We got stuff always going on on all sorts of different platforms outside of YouTube that you guys make sure to follow all that to catch all that. We'll see you guys in the next video and uh, peace out for now. Bye. But you want to watch, you want to watch one of these related videos. Click one of these, click it, click, click that one, that one. It don't matter. Click them both, but hit that subscribe button too, but click these two.